Hey guys, Steve here with the Scroll Saw Workshop. Out in the shop tonight working on a tip that I received from a reader of my blog. And uh, it's turned in to be what I think is such a good idea that I wanted to share it with you. It's often handy to have what's known as a zero clearance table for your scroll saw. Now these zero clearance tables, uh, they basically just uh, decrease the size of the hole that the blade goes through which helps you keep the pieces that you cut from falling down through the table and either losing them if there are pieces you want to keep or if it's waste material that's falling down on the floor and making a mess or sometimes it'll even uh, get caught up in the bottom chuck and uh, potentially even break a blade or two from time to time. Over the years I've built zero clearance tables for several different scroll saws and I've cut them out of acrylic, I've made them out of wood and uh, different materials and they're all cumbersome to make, uh, difficult to install and take off the machine quickly and they just generally are uh, more trouble than they're worth so you end up not using them. This one is so simple that I think people will actually use it. You can see that I've put this zero clearance table on top of my uh, new Pegasus scroll saw. The only reason I'm using this saw is because I have it out uh, away from the wall and it's easy to do the video on, but this particular tip would work on any scroll saw that has a metal table that a magnet would stick to, and I think that's pretty much all of them. Speaking about magnets, that's exactly what this zero clearance table is. It is a magnetic sheet that I purchased off Amazon uh, that was sold as a dry erase marker set. It actually came with the eraser and the dry erase markers and this sheet. Now, when the reader submitted the tip, he actually used, in his case, he used magnetic sign material uh, that you would like use on the side of a car. So I'm sourcing some of that to see if that's cheaper. This sheet right here, which as you can see, wasn't quite big enough. It'd be nice to have a full size sheet, uh, but I think it's large enough for most scroll saws because you're not gonna use that area back there much anyway. It doesn't seem to be a problem. Uh, but I'm trying to source material for that is a magnetic sign sheet also. Uh, in the meantime, I'll put the link to this uh, sheet that I purchased on Amazon. It was under $20. I think it was like $14.99 or something like that. Uh, but again, I'll put the link to this down in the uh, description. To get this sheet cut out to the uh, shape of the saw table, I just simply took a marker and put the full size sheet on and just traced the table from the underneath. Uh, then I was just simply able to turn it over and cut it out with scissors. It cuts fairly smoothly and easily with scissors. That was no problem at all. Uh, while I had it on the table and after I had drawn the shape, I took a small nail and went from underneath the table up through the hole and put a little indentation so I would know where to uh, drill this hole. And then I just simply picked a drill bit that was the size I wanted the hole to be and I just carefully drilled the little hole for the zero clearance. A couple of benefits of this, uh, besides the fact that it'll keep the pieces above the table for you, is that this surface is very slick. So it's easy to slide your board over the top of this. Now one thing I can't speak to yet is how long this surface material is going to last. Uh, it's smooth enough and it feels hard enough that I don't think it's going to uh, uh, deteriorate on us too quick, but I'm sure it will wear out. Another thing that might happen if you're not careful is this hole could become elongated over time as the blade runs into it. Now, if you keep your blade tension nice and tight and you cut with proper technique where you're not putting a lot of side pressure or too much pressure you know, on the front of the blade, uh, you shouldn't have much of a problem. Uh, it's when you get in a hurry, you're cutting thick wood and you don't let the wood or you don't let the blade do the cut, you're trying to push it too quick, is when you're going to have problems with this blade flexing and cutting this hole. So be careful with that. Um, I'm going to do a couple of quick cuts here and what I'm going to show you is I'm going to cut some very small pieces and just keep an eye on what happens to those pieces. Alright, we'll just cut some very small pieces here. I think you can see the benefit there is that all of those pieces stayed on top of the table. Now let's talk about 
the negatives of a zero clearance table and why you might not want to leave it on there all the time. One is the Pega scroll saw table has these holes in it that's used for uh, dust extraction. And unless you want to painstakingly take the time to drill those holes in this piece also, uh, you're not going to be able to use the dust extraction. I don't use dust extraction on a scroll saw anyway, so it's not a problem for me. I also don't leave the zero clearance table on the scroll saw except for those projects where I need it, which is not that many. Uh, it's not that common that you're cutting very small pieces that you need to save, but it does happen. That's why this is such a good idea, is it's uncommon that you need it, but when you do, it needs to be easy to use or you won't use it. And this is super easy. You can see it just lifts up and lays down, and it sticks tight enough that it absolutely does not slide at all. So once you get it mounted on the table and you get your blade lined up with the hole, uh, then it works fine. Uh, like I said, I'm sure there will be some wear marks on it over time, and I'll let you know as I use it for a while how that works out. But from what I'm seeing so far, this is by far the easiest zero clearance table that I've ever seen to use.